Hello friends, welcome to the 115th session of SAP Commerce tutorial. Guys, in our 111th chapter, we learned about the basics of the Hybris integration module. We also reviewed the integration UI tool and we created our first integration object. We learned that using an inbound channel configuration, which is also called as ICC, we can authenticate incoming requests to the integration API. At that time, we discussed the basic authentication type. In basic auth, we use the system's built-in user credentials. For example, the default admin employee. For that, if you remember, I use the username as admin and the password as NIMDA. Please remember that these are the employee credentials, not the customer credentials. Here you can see in the request, I was using the basic auth, right? And I was using the username as admin and password as NIMDA. Here, admin is basically a user of type employee. So these basic auth credentials literally pass in every request as authorization colon basic base 64 of admin and nimda so username is admin and then password is nimda but friends please be aware that this is not the authentication mechanism we use in the real projects when connecting with the external systems instead we use the oauth2 authentication and after authenticating we must also authorize the linked employee user and why we don't use this basic authentication in the real projects because the external systems would need to store an employee's raw password which is insecure that's why real projects almost always use the oauth2 icc instead of the basic right and we use the basic auth type only for the testing purposes so friends before we move further let's make the thing very clear what is the difference between basic and oauth2 auth type in the icc or what is the difference between basic and oauth2 auth type in inbound channel configuration the first difference is the credential used in the basic authentication we use the employee username and password for example if the employee username is int underscore user and the password is password123. So this is basically the combination we use or we send in the header while making a call to the hybrid system in the basic authentication setup. But in the OAuth2 authentication, we use the OAuth client for the authentication, which is a combination of client ID and client secret and this OAuth client is mapped with a particular employee so how to generate that client id and client secret and how to map it with employee and what type of employee it is what type of user groups this employee has we will discuss all these things in detail in this video the second difference is request header in the basic authentication the request header looks like authorization then colon then basic base 64 of username and password right in this format and then in the oauth2 authentication we use the request header as authorization colon bearer of access token how to generate that access token i will explain in some time in the basic authentication employee must belong to the integration groups which all are those integration groups i will explain in some time Similarly, in OAuth2 authentication also, we need the same user groups, but here the token maps the client with the employee. How this mapping is done, we will see in some time. And the fifth difference comes on the security aspect. Basic authentication is basically insecure, right? Because here you are directly exposing the employee username and password with the external system so your password has to be stored by the external system so that's why this authentication is a insecure mechanism but in oauth2 authentication you are not actually storing the employee username and password instead you are basically 
you know storing the client id and client secret right which is mapped with the employee right so this means you never expose the employee username and password with the external system so this is more secure and it is based on the tokens right and this token also has an expiry right and this also can be rotated and then the final difference comes on the usage part basic authentication is rarely used it is only used for the local testing but oo2 authentication basically it is the one which is used in the real external integrations i hope guys this is clear to you so guys in today's session we will focus on oauth2 authentication and we'll learn how to configure the authorization what is the difference between authentication and authorization this also we will learn in some time because remember even if oauth2 authentication is successful your request will still fail unless the employee has proper authorization on the integration object so authorization is also a very important part of oauth2 authentication now before going into the practical implementation details let's discuss the three real world examples where we use the oauth2 authentication for connecting the external systems with the hybrid system So I hope now you understand how the external systems basically connect with the hybrid system and how OAuth2 authentication plays an important role in this communication. So in short, I can say OAuth2 plus authorization is equal to secure integration. I hope you also agree with this. Now let's understand this OAuth2 authentication and authorization with a practical example. So let's assume Azure portal sends the course material data into SAP Commerce and Azure portal basically sends the attributes like code, title, material type. Material type can be video, PDF, slides, or link, right? Let's suppose Azure portal sends these attributes right to the hybrid system. And in hybrid systems, we have a database table course materials, right? And we will be saving all these attribute values into the course materials database table. And we want to have this communication using the OAuth2 authentication via inbound channel configuration. And we also want to authorize this request. So for that, we will have an employee with some integration groups, right? And then we will be basically giving the right permissions, right, to this employee so that the client ID and client secrets map with this employee has the right permissions to create the data into this course material table or update the data or basically delete the data into this course materials database table. So to achieve this requirement, the first step is definition of the item type in training core item.xml file. So in short, authentication is equal to who and authorization is what. So this is all about connecting the external system with the hybrid system using the integration concept via OAuth2 authentication and authorization. So what we learn in this video, we learn the differences between authentication and authorization with examples. We also saw the differences between basic auth and OAuth2 in inbound channel configuration. We also learned why OAuth2 is the real method in projects, right? I explained that basic auth is mainly used for the testing purpose and OAuth2 is the actual authentication mechanism which is used in the real projects. We also saw the real world integration use cases and we also saw the end-to-end -end example where I created a integration object course material, right? Then we also covered authentication and authorization part. And then we tested this whole functionality, right? Using the metadata get API and insert call write a post api in the postman so this is the complete secure flow to connect the external systems with the sap commerce i hope all the topics are clear to you so this is all about the integration 
objects using the OAuth2 authentication and authorization. I hope guys this video is useful for you and if you like this video please share this channel with your friends. Thank you for watching. Bye.